Okay, a Weimar Berlin snapshot. Frenchman Henri Gautier Villard, publishing as Villy, is perhaps best known as the sometime husband of Colette, whose novels he passed off as his own. The Third Sex by Villy, looking at homosexual life in Paris, Berlin and elsewhere, was published in 1927. He didn't write that either. In this passage, in a Berlin nightclub, the speaker is a French visitor called Marc. Karl looks at me with the somewhat anxious attention of the Germans who are always asking if we laugh at them. He prefers to prick his fork among the anchovies presented to him in a crystal basin. It's charming here, I said, looking around. It is tastefully decorated. Really? Do you like it? And you must be fastidious. Now it's the fashionable tango that brushes our ears while we eat a delicious and hellishly spicy chicken paprika. This music is nice because it does not burst your eardrums, adding with an endearing smile. Obviously, it's not worth the death of his salt. Do you remember? To better awaken my memories, his foot, after having come up against the leg of the table, gently rubs my boot. I return his pressure politely, but a little coldly. It's true. I always forget. As the hour advances, it seems to me that we warm up in the neighbouring boxes. There is an incredible back and forth of ice buckets from which tapering bottles point. The champagne corks pop constantly. I hear a little brutal laughter, angry whispers. God, it is hot in here, and we are thirsty. Here is the barman with cocktails. Hola, Herr Ober. The man in the white jacket slides up to us and with a roundabout movement sets down a table, his tray loaded with tall glasses and crushed ice. Cherry Cobla, Manhattan, Rainbow, Nightcap. Rainbow, decides Carl. This is what they do best here. I swallow with feverish haste the fresh, and devious drink. It doesn't seem like much, but when it hits you, these drugs. Another tango. The irresistible Carl takes my hand in an imploring gesture. And this one, come on, are you going to dance it with me? I get up and off we go through the hustle and bustle. Actually, I feel that we make a perfect couple, Carl and me. I respond like an elastic ball, my steps bouncing off his, repeating them as in a mirror. They seem preordained. I risk fantasies which are immediately understood and followed. The joy of a beautiful dance takes me, our double image reflected by the high looking glasses, and throws me in the process a feeling of aesthetic satisfaction. Two or three couples stopped to watch us. Heinel, we are causing a sensation, exclaims my companion, dropping on the couch next to me. But what a partner you are. Yes, wonderful. Foxtrots succeed Brazilian tangos and maxises. Mechanically driven by the intoxication of the dance and that of the cocktails, I started to spin or slide again with Carl. Around us, it slowly, slowly, slowly turns into an orgy. People spill on the couches with mushy laughter, tickle each other, bombard themselves with mimosas and narcissi. The oriental youth is sprawled on the captain's knees. The two students kiss on the lips. The heat is heavy, aggravated by a hundred perfumes. 
Suddenly, Carl claims that he can no longer dance like that. In the blink of an eye, he unbuttoned his tunic and his chest appears in a pale mauve silk shirt. Then he grabs my shoulder because a tango begins. A tango whose rhythm I find particularly voluptuous. Positively, the form of this boy seems to melt under the pressure of my arm, like the spine of a cat. His dance is now more undulating. I feel his fresh breath on my chin. His side moulds to mine, and the flesh that I feel under the silk, so light it completely takes away the feeling of holding a man in my arms. The senses spurred on by the nervousness of this evening, I tighten my grip. I bend him so that he literally lays on top of me. All the old voluptuousness of this South American dance, the moves of which have been tamed for the salons, is reinvigorated at that moment. Applause bursts out behind us when we stop. Come on, Mark. Come with me, he breathes, his voice changed, dragging me to the side of one of the curtains.